Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is something called IQR, which is the interquartile range, and how it's related to box plots, and learn how to make those, and use those as a way to depict graphs, and interpret graphs, and etc. First thing I want to point out is the, uh, the last video we were talking about the mean and median, and in the example involving the New York tourists, I'm mean, sorry, the New York uh, commuters, how long it took them to get to the um, to drive to work? The you notice the mean and the median were not the same value. Um, the mean usually represents the average value, while the median usually represents the typical value. And when you have a distribution of data that's roughly symmetric, i.e., has a it looks the same on both the left and right side of the center, then the mean and the median are basically going to be about the same value, or certainly very, very close. Um, but in a situation where the data is what we call skewed, in other words, it's pulled towards the right or pulled towards the left, the mean is usually farther out in the tail than it is the median. So if it's pulled to the right, the mean will be bigger than the median. If it's skewed left or pulled to the left, then the median mean is actually smaller than the median. So something to keep in mind is that when you see the mean and median are different value, different from one another, then it means that the data is skewed one way or the other. Another way to measure spread is to look at what's called the IQR, interquartile range. Um, this basically involves finding the median and then finding the median of both the first half of the data and the second half of the data. So just like before, to find the median, you arrange the data in order from smallest to biggest, and you find the very middle value, which sometimes can be a specific value if it's an odd number of data points, or will be the average of the middle two points if you have an even number of data points. Then what you do is you find the first quartile, which is the median of the first half of the data, which is the data to the left of the median, and you also find the third quartile, which is the median of the second half of the data, or the data to the right of the data, of the median, sorry. And then we define the inner quartile range as the distance from Q3 to Q1, which we usually get by subtracting Q3 minus Q1. Keep in mind that Q3 is always bigger than Q1, as long as you ordered it from smallest to biggest. So let's take a look at an example. This is the same data we were using for the New Yorkers and how long it takes them to get to work. So if you remember, we found that the median was 22.5, was halfway between the 10th and the 11th um, data points when they were set in order. Okay, So then if we realize we have 10 data points to the left, then the Q1 will actually be halfway between the 5th and the 6th one, which happens to be in the most, this case, both of them are 15s. So we take the average of 15, the first quartile turns out to be 15. To find the third quartile, we find the halfway point between the 15th and 16th data points because that would represent the second half of the data and in this case that would be halfway between 40 and 45 which is 42.5 so we see now that Q1 is 15 Q3 is 42.5 and we can find the IQR by subtracting those two values and realize oh the middle half of the data or the middle 50 percent is in between 42.5 and 15 so it has a range of 27.5 minutes and so the middle half of the travel times of New Yorkers is 27.5 minutes. Why this number is useful to us is it gives us a way to determine outliers. When we have points that are far away from the other, all the other points, we want to determine if it's far enough away to be considered an outlier, to be considered strange. Okay, and so we use this um, rule for outliers, which is um, you take the end of your quartile range and multiply by 1.5 to determine it gives you a mathematical way to determine if a number is an outlier. If a number is more than this value above the med above Q3, it's considered an outlier. Or if it's more um, less than this value below Q1, then it's considered also an outlier. So, for example, in the data from the New Yorkers here, if I take the interquartile range, which was 27.5, and multiply it by 1.5, it comes out 41.25. So then I added it to Q3 and I find out anything bigger than 83.75 would be considered an outlier. I also subtract this number from Q1, and anything below negative 26.25 would be considered an outlier. Now this doesn't happen with our data set. We, our lowest value is 5. We certainly don't have anything negative. 
However, this one does occur, if you notice, 85 is bigger than 83.75. So that number is considered an outlier out of all the numbers there. It would be considered an outlier where nothing, no other numbers is. The five number summary is a way, is includes these three values, the Q1, the median, and the uh, Q3. It also adds to it the minimum and the maximum. These are five numbers that quickly tell us what a data set looks like and also allows us to kind of divide up the data into what's called quartiles. 25% of the data will always be between any two adjoining uh, numbers. So for example, in between the minimum and Q1, 25% of the data. Between Q1 and the median, another 25%. Q1 and Q3 would be 25%, and the final 25% would be between Q3 and, and the maximum. Uh, so quite, kind of a way to divide up the data and figure out the range of the numbers. This five number summary allows us now to make box and whisker plots. Um, basically it's a way to represent pictorially each of these five numbers and give us a feel by looking at this picture how big each of these data sets are. So to make a box plot, we draw and label number line that includes the range of the distribution. So in other words, it needs to go from the smallest number to the biggest number of our data set. We draw a box that goes from Q1 to Q3, and then we um, draw a line representing the median inside that box, and then we extend lines, which are sometimes called whiskers, from the box out to both the minimum and maximum values that are not outliers. Outliers gets its own little mark here if you do find a, uh, um, a particular value as an outlier, and we'll show that here in just a second. So as an example, again, using the New York commuting time data, we found out earlier that the median was 22.5, Q1 was 15, and Q3 is 42.5. So we use those three numbers to make our box, which is here. You notice Q1 is at this value, Q3 is at this value, and the median is here. You notice how the number line goes from the smallest value, which remember was 5, all the way up to at least 85. So actually I make the number line go from 0 to 90. And I draw Q1 right above where 15 would be, Q3 right above where 42.5 would be, and the median would be right above where 22.5 is, is. And I make a box, drawing the line in the middle representing the median. Then I denote where the maximum and the minimum are. The minimum, if you remember, was 5, so I put a dot, dot at 5, and I connect it from the middle of the box to that dot. This is called a whisker. And likewise, I do the same thing for a maximum. However, in this case, remember 85 was a maximum, uh, was an outlier, sorry. So it was actually considered um, an outlier. So we're going to denote that by putting a dot there. And then we're going to go to the next highest value, which in this case was 65. And that's where our whisker is going to end up at. If you notice, it ends up here at 65. Okay? And so the idea is that we go to the maximum that is not an outlier. And in this case, that is a number 65. And we get what is called, in fact, this is called a modified box plot because it includes and depicts the outlier. And this is how you make a box plot. Once you get the five number summary, you use that to make your values. And hopefully you've seen this before, so this is not something new for you.